My name is Lacey Williamson. This is my story. When I was five years old, um, my parents separated and me and my little brother lived with my dad and my older sister went to live with my mom. Throughout my childhood into adulthood, I experienced physical, sexual, and verbal abuse. As a child, I was sexually abused by someone close to my family, so close that they lived in my home. And I wanted to tell someone, anyone at this point, I wanted to tell my dad, um, but because our relationship wasn't good and we weren't close, I couldn't bring myself to tell him what had been going on. I couldn't bring myself to tell him that I had been staying up night after night, waiting for the school bus to get there just so that I could avoid being sexually abused. Externally, I seemed like I had it all together, but internally, I was dying. I was faced with the fact that my innocence had been taken away from me, and that is something that I felt I could never get back. When I was 13 years old, I finally decided it was time to tell someone. I told a friend from school about the horror that I had been experiencing for half of my life. At the age of 14, I started dating my first boy boyfriend, and this was the first time that I had ever felt seen and listened to. One thing led to another, and before you know it, I lost my virginity at the age of 15 years old. Around the time that I became sexually active with my boyfriend, the friend that I had told about being sexually abused had told one of her friends, and her friend told her mother. The secret was out, and DFAX was called, and I was shamed by my family and was in a place where it was hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Rumors were being spread across the school, and because of this, I spent most of the year in the front office with the counselor, crying and begging for my life to change. The teenager that once made A's and B's and loved people was losing all hope and flunking classes. As my life journey continued, my relationship with my dad only got worse. I tried to live with my mom, but I just couldn't. I felt stuck and angry, and I started to rebel. I ran away with my boyfriend for about three days, and the police found me and took me back home. When I got home, my dad was sitting in the truck with all of my belongings packed, and he drove me to South Carolina and left me there to live with my aunt. I was there for about seven or eight months, and I wasn't allowed to go anywhere, talk to anyone on the phone, to anyone. I was completely isolated. When I returned home, I was in several group homes, and I went to juvenile a couple of times. During this season, I never got any visits from my dad because he said I was unruly and I was not allowed to speak to my mother. After these crazy things happened, I went to trial against the man who had sexually abused me. Speaking on the stand while everyone listened about how I was sexually abused was one of the hardest things I had ever been through. The person who had abused me was sentenced to prison. When I was 16, my dad gave temporary custody to a woman that he worked with that I barely knew. She also had a family of her own. Once again, I felt abandoned, alone, depressed, and worthless. In the midst of all the transition, I found out that I was pregnant. Because I had no family and no one to take care of me, I was sent to another group home where I stayed until the end of my pregnancy. During this time, there were no visits or calls from anyone. In 2007, my daughter was born. I dropped out of high school and I got my GED, got my own apartment, and my boyfriend, which was also her father, was out of jail and we were living together. 
He quickly became verbally and physically abusive. I had to make a decision to protect myself and my daughter and leave. At 19 years old, I had my second daughter by another man that had a drinking problem because I knew no other way out and wanted my daughters to have a dad. I went back to my ex thinking things would get better, but the abuse only got worse. I was a single mom of two at 19 years old with my own home that I could barely maintain. At 20 years old, I was pregnant again. This was a defining season of my life. Struggling to take care of the two children I already had, I felt hopeless. My only outside influence was a girl that I worked with who was not a Christian, and she told me that my only other option was to get an abortion. I turned all of my emotions off and became completely numb to everything and everyone around me. The pain was unbearable. I was seven weeks pregnant and I didn't let myself feel or let myself think or accept that it was in fact a baby. I went forward with the procedure and at 21 years old, I had an abortion. When I woke up from the anesthesia, I was immediately ridden with regret. I felt completely empty. The feeling of a baby and the morning sickness was gone. The thought that I had killed my baby was overwhelming. It was as if a part of me died inside when I realized what I had just done. I looked around and saw all the women getting abortions and all the women working there encouraging abortion. So many emotions flooded my mind in that short moment. I was disgusted, I was sad, and I was angry. I lacked confidence, self-worth, and self-esteem. I carried shame, guilt, and regret. This caused me to allow others to treat me like nothing and to take advantage of me, which only led to me feeling more worthless. Three months after my abortion, I became pregnant with my son. I was 23 years old when I had my third child. I got my tubes tied and I remember crying before I had him and thinking that I don't deserve him because of the previous abortion. How could I embrace this child when I wasn't willing to embrace the other? How am I going to raise three babies without a father? I was in a very dark place at this time. I would go to the Pregnancy Resource Center just to be around the Christian women there who love me, that would pray for me. Community was vital for me during this season to push me forward. I knew I needed to deal with the things of my past, but didn't know how. I decided to give church a try. During this time, I was jobless and almost homeless. Through a relationship at the Pregnancy Resource Center, I got a job at a dentist office. When my son was around a year and a half years old, his father, whom my daughters had also known since they were in diapers, came home for good. I heard about Relevant and I decided to give it a try. I did and I loved it. I had some issues on and off that I guess I had tucked away and I would have nightmares and bad thoughts. Sometimes I would just hear an abortion commercial and I would just cry. I just kept it all tucked away, but one day something in me shifted and I began to have an overwhelming urge to help others. I wanted to be different. <laughs> but God quickly reminded me that you can't help anyone else until you help yourself. Shortly after that, a woman named Julie from the Pregnancy Resource Center of Henry County contacted me and told me about a healing retreat for those dealing with abortion-wounded heart. Again, it was like the Holy Spirit said, you have to go. 
I went on this healing retreat from May the 4th to the 6th, 2017. I came home a new woman. In all my searching, going to church and trying to fix whatever this brokenness was inside of me, it had finally happened. I surrendered it all to God on that weekend. I was completely 100% vulnerable. It wasn't easy, but I knew it had to be done for me to heal. I wanted to heal and be the best me that I could be so that I could be the best mother to my kids. Over this one weekend, I had to deal with the abuse I had experienced and began forgiving all those who had wronged me. I forgave everyone and let go of the strongholds, but most importantly, I forgave myself for the abortion. I spoke this out loud to God, and for the first time in my life, I felt God's arms wrap around me. I finally willingly received His grace and His mercy, and I felt His never-ending love. I was redeemed. I was finally set free from all the shame, regret, and guilt that I had carried for so long. Being vulnerable was one of the hardest things that I had ever done, but it was the best decision I had ever made. I heard God tell me, I love you. I was never gone. I've always been chasing you. All you had to do was surrender everything. The last day of the retreat, the song that was played was Amazing Grace. The day I came home from the retreat, which was a Sunday, I wasn't planning on going to church because I had been gone all weekend and I wanted to spend time with my kids and unpack. But God put it on my heart that I needed to be at Relevant. The Sunday I attended Relevant, we started a new series, Shame Off You. I was right where I needed to be. It was basically a recap of all we had already done on the retreat. Amazingly, the last song of worship that day was the same song we ended the retreat with. God knew that I would never forget that weekend, but that message and that song was just a reminder of how good He is. I cried and worshiped with joy for the first time during church. <laughs> I cried tears of joy because I had finally witnessed God's grace like never before. In September 2017, I decided to get baptized. My daughters decided at last minute to do it with me. We were all three baptized together and it was a moment I'll never forget. It was a moment that displayed God's goodness, love and mercy. In the midst of my growth, my relationship was suffering. My son's father and I had started to drift apart. He expressed that he just couldn't get into the church thing, even though he had gone with me. We separated. Things got very hard. I continued to attend small group and church, but it was very hard for me to understand why things were going the way they were. <laughs> I prayed about my son's father and our relationship and that we could at least co-parent until growing separately the way we needed to and then maybe together if it ended up that way. We still talked, I still loved him. I just wanted to grow to my full potential in my faith and in my relationship with God and we weren't on the same page. The last few months have brought even more tragedy into my life that my family and I are facing. I thank God every day for the retreat I attended and for my spiritual family here at Relevant. I met with Pastor Carl and Julie about my story. God has shown me grace time and time again and I don't deserve it. You are no different. All you have to do is surrender it all to Him. You can use your story and your struggles as an excuse to stay where you are or you can let it fuel you to do better and put your trust in God and watch your life change in every aspect for the better. My story is not perfect. It was never meant to be. <clears throat> if we just embrace our imperfections and let love do the rest, we will set the tone for our friends, family, and our children.
No hurt, habit, or hang-up will ever separate you from the love of Jesus.